joined in studio tonight by the new congressman representing Long Beach and neighboring cities, Robert Garcia. Nice to have you nice here. Nice to have you. Congrats on uh, you. getting thank sworn you. in. Thank you. Happy, uh, happy to always be here, so thank it, you. It took a few days to get sworn in, so <laughs> yeah, you're fi finally in there. Almost a full week. <laughs> All right. Um, in the meantime, though, he, back here in California, these storms have been the big story. The federal government getting involved now. What does that mean for the average person? What can they be looking for from the federal government in terms of help? Because a lot of people are hurting. No, look, I think first it's important to know that there, there has been a declaration, obviously, by the president, and so that really opens up uh, so much for, for homeowners, for folks that are here that are working. And so we encourage folks that have had damage uh, to their homes, through their business, to actually contact FEMA. Uh, there are grants available. There is help available. Having the governor, obviously the president there today, is, is really helpful. Um, and it's another reminder that uh, we have a lot of work to do around infrastructure in this state water infrastructure, stormwater capture infrastructure. And so the president, the governor have had a chance to also do uh, and have a lot of conversations with folks. And I think it's gonna be very helpful for uh, investments in the future. Well, we know that Vice President Kamala Harris is coming to our area tomorrow to talk about infrastructure and capturing the water that we get here. Is that a priority for you? Oh, it's a huge priority for everyone in the state. I mean, the, the truth is we saw the amount of water uh, that uh, that came to kind of the entire state to all the counties and the amount of water that was wasted. And so we do have some stormwater capture in the state of California and across the country. It is not enough. Uh, we could and we have to invest in better technology to capture more of this water um, and not just from agriculture on the agriculture side, but also on the on cities. I mean, the way we're watering, the way we're uh, taking care of our lawns uh, at our homes, um, that is the future. And so I think there's going to be a huge focus on stormwater capture in the future. I mean, it's frustrating for a lot of people to see that water just uh, wash away very, when we're in yes. the middle of the drought, right? I mean, listen, I mean, to go from where we were at the drought to where we are today is a huge change. And so I think all of us saw all that water uh, go, go, going down the drain and thinking and thinking this could be invested back into our, into our greens. All right, let's talk a little bit about your role now in Congress. You're the president of the freshman class. Congratulations Thank on you. that, for the Democrats at least. Um, and one of the things we talked about the last time you were on the issue is, is that sometimes you enjoy trolling on Twitter. Sure. Um, so the person you're trolling today <laughs> is Congress Congressman George Santos, I think that's his name. Yeah. Uh, this was the uh, the tweet that you put up today. George Santos is literally a gay villain out of a comic <laughs> book. Um, so, first off, what do you mean by that? And also, why use the word gay there? I mean, yeah. uh, we know you're obviously openly gay, so yeah, is he. Yeah. But but is it necessary to bring that into that? Is that unnecessarily yes. divisive? I mean, listen, I think first, that we have no idea who George Santos really is. We don't know what his name is. Uh, we don't know um, how he got all the money that he received. We have no idea how he has been um, attracting all the donors that he's had. And he, we also know that he's a part of the community. I, I'm, I'm an openly gay person. He, he is as well. And the fact that he's linked up as an LGBTQ plus person with some of the extreme far right elements of the party that are trying to essentially attack people and, and their marriages, that are trying to attack people that are that are that, that are that are trans or that are trying to actually just gain rights, to me is not acceptable. And so, as an LGBTQ plus person himself, uh, I, you know, obviously I'm just having I'm having fun on on Twitter and other places. But it's, it's, it's serious in a sense where he's not representing the, and, or supporting the community that he is a part of and, and linking up with the most extreme forces that are trying to take away people's rights. And so I think George Santos needs to resign. Uh, his own members of his own party, Republicans, freshmen, are asking him to resign. We don't know who he is, and I think it's a danger to the country. Before we get to your Superman story, have you had any personal interaction with him directly? No, I have not. Uh, I mean, the, the entire first week that we were there, we were pretty separated and just getting sworn in. And so I have seen him from uh, on the other side of the aisle. Uh, I'm sure I will run into him. Um, and, and quite frankly, if I see him in person, I'll, I'll say, tell him what I've told you. He needs to resign. And he's heard it from his constituents. He's heard it from the other freshman Republicans. Uh, we don't know who, who this person is. And um, he shouldn't be in Congress. All right, let's get to your oath. When you took the oath, you, did, you didn't do it on a Bible. You did it on a Superman comic book. What's the backstory there? Well, I did it on the U.S. Constitution. So, I mean, I think yeah. first, I, I, what I did is I, I took three items that meant a lot to me personally. I think for me, I think being in Congress, you've got to first swear allegiance to the Constitution, first and foremost. And then I had a picture of my parents who, who passed away to the, to the pandemic. Uh, my citizenship papers uh, became, became a U.S. citizen. And then a copy from the Library of Congress of Superman No. 1, which I'm a, I'm a fan. Uh, it's a it's a old 1930s comic book. Um, and I learned to read um, and write English as a young kid reading comics. And so three things that meant a lot to me personally. 
but I, I swore on the U.S. Constitution. So you came here from Peru yeah. as, as five years old, right? Yep. And Superman helped you sort of learn this whole culture, right? I mean, Absolutely. is it kind of crazy to be sitting there and to see the original one and be in Congress? What does that moment mean to you? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think uh, it, that, that issue is like the holy grail of comic books. Uh, <laughs> gr growing, up as a, growing up as a kid, I read a lot of comics because um, that's how I, I really learned the language. And um, for me, also, there's good values there. Truth and justice, be honest, be a good person. Uh, always be, you know, uh, love, love your country, love the community you're a part of. Superman happens to also be the probably most famous immigrant um, ever in, in American <laughs> fiction. So, you know, it was, it was, it was important. But for me, m more important than, than that is having my parents, uh, a re representation of my parents there with me. Uh, being a naturalized citizen, I always tell people I love this country deeply, and my citizenship means more to me than anything else. Um, and taking an oath in the Constitution matters, and I think yeah. that you have to, you know, you're, you're pledging allegiance to what makes this country uh, special and, and, and so welcoming of so many people. Yeah. All right. Well, it's great to see you. Congrats. Thank and, you. and thank you for coming back now that you're a big time member of Congress, and we hope to talk to you more Anytime. Uh, as the journey continues. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. All thank right. You for